KZ Radio, where we have one of the most hottest shows every single Saturday at 10. None other than the Sharpening Zone with my friend and yours, Dr. Maynard. How you doing, Doc? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us again today on the Sharpening Zone. As, as, as he's already said, I am your host, Dr. Maynard. I'm excited. Our topic today is don't allow life or don't let life shut your mouth. Again, don't let life shut your mouth because many times we can find ourselves in circumstances and situations that does just that. Today I have some beautiful ladies in the house. To my right, I have evangelist Cynthia Wilcox. To my left, I have the beautiful mother in Zion, amen, the Apostle Loretta Pernice and her lovely, sweet, I love her so much, I mean with all of my heart, I love her so much. We have a minister, Chantel Harris, which is Apostle Pernice's armor bearer. Uh, they're out of Warren, Ohio from Elam Christian Center. Uh, one church, two locations, because they're in Warren as well as Astibula. God is a good God. Yes. Amen. 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 So grateful for having all of you ladies on today. Um, I do want to make note and mention that evangelist uh, Cynthia Wilcox is also a co-author with me on church folks going to hell in a handbasket which is a book that we wrote about mm, good four or five years ago I believe it has been around about now um, and she is uh, one of uh, she she has a prophetic gift um, as well as in writing and poetry and she speaks through that uh, poetically and so before the day is over amen before our hour is up uh, she's going to bring what the Lord has given her uh, to present to us this day about allowing life to shut your mouth Apostle Pernice so glad to have you here in the studio glad with to me be here today. Um, I want you guys to know that, like I said, this is a mother in Zion. She is a pillar in the community. Uh, she outreaches into the community because it's not just enough to have a church and or ministry if you're not really being a blessing to the community at large around you. Yeah. Um, Apostle Pernice has also um, uh, been a blessing in the lives of many through Pathway Sober House, mm -hmm. uh, which is a transitional uh, housing. Uh, well, it provides transitional housing mm -hmm. uh, for those who are uh, coming off of various substance abuse uh, and or they are in a substance abuse program. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have always been very diligent in assisting not just the individual, but their families at large. Mm -hmm. Would you like to kind of talk a little bit about that this morning? Well, Pathway Sober House was... Uh came out of Total Deliverance, which was a, a, a Christian 12-step group. Um, and the, the, the relapse was very high uh, because I realized that a lot of people were going back into the same community that they were in. So it's like, you know, transplanting the, uh, a flower into one pot and then putting it back in the main pot and it gets sick again. So... Mm -hmm. I decided to open a place for people to be able to establish themselves mm -hmm. and to get on the right foot with how, you know, life really is going and not being, have to be put back into that same disease pot. And a lot of times we don't realize it, but um, a lot of people that's coming out of prison, a lot of people that have been in um, uh, addictive behaviors that when you put them back in that same place, they kind of fall right back into right, the same right. thing. So um, instead of having a kicking it party for them to come home, we need to have something planned that'll keep them yeah. away from where they've been. So I thought Pathway would be a good place. 1999, we started. Yeah. Amen. Yep, Amen. we're 19 years old with Pathway Sober House. Awesome. I uh, also want to, because we cannot uh, pass the fact that you have won numerous awards. Uh, you have been given so many various recognitions for your services to the community. Could you care to share about some of those things? Don't I know she's a very modest woman. Um, she's always very, she's not, she doesn't do what she does because she wants accolades. It's just that she does it so well and the anointing is on her life and God has chosen you for such a time as this that people want to say and share with you that they love you and that they appreciate you. Can you tell us about some of those things? Well, um, some of the awards came from things that I was really just being obedient to the spirit uh, not because I had great ideas or anything I just could feel the need for certain things and and so that's what I uh, I stepped out by faith and done at that time a lot of pastors weren't doing things like that mm -hmm. um, 
that really was in 1999. They didn't call it an epidemic, but it really was with right. crack, you right. know. Um, and so uh, now we have the epidemic with, um, you know, pain pills and different things like that. Yeah. And actually, the epidemic is in the church, too. Uh, people have been put on medication for knee, back, things like that, right. and they have become addicted to it which is very embarrassing for a Christian. Right, right. So um, now the times have changed during these years and we're looking at, um, we're looking at a different set of people right, right now. Um, and the, the awards just is something I guess to let, to, to help me or to let me know that they appreciate yes. the work that I've yes. done. Yes. Uh, so we were the first sober house in Warren um, we didn't have a sober house. It was places, uh, you know, around us, surrounding us, Youngstown, Akron, that had sober houses, but Warren didn't have one. So they really didn't know what category to put me in when we started this. Mm -hmm. Now we have all kind of sober houses and different uh, reentry programs. Okay. So, I mean, I see the work of God being done, but um, I really don't elaborate on the... Right awards and things like that because I I do appreciate that but really God should get the glory yes. because he gave yeah. me the the unction in my spirit to do that so right. that's what we done amen yeah. amen evangelist Wilcox you have anything to say piggyback because you and I normally go out and hang out in Astibula Elon Christian Center there is not a service that we've ever come to that the Holy Ghost is not present yeah and the amen. spirit of the Lord is high and deliverance is available in the building mm -hmm. many are delivered many captives are set free at every service it's an honor to always be in your presence it's an, always an honor to be with you um, I want them, those who are watching, to know that you have always been a great inspiration uh, to me. I thank you for uh, all of the love that you've always shown me, the doors and stuff that you've always opened for me as well. Um, because it's one thing to say it, uh, just when it's you and I, but this is an audience uh, at large, uh, and I want them to know that I appreciate you, um, and I appreciate all that you have been and all that you have done. Um, what do you have to say? Because I know when we go, we always have an awesome time in the Lord with them. Uh, regarding shutting, what has shut my mouth? No, well, what has no, shut what, my no mouth? visiting Elam Christian Center, um, amen. Well, uh, visiting your church has been awesome. Um, the presence of God has always been high, yes. like mentioned. Um, and I just look forward to the great things that's it's coming in the future. Amen, amen. But the topic again, so we won't, you know, get too sidebarred, is don't let life shut your mouth. And um, what the Lord gave me was Psalms 81 and 10. Um, and it depends on which version you're reading. I think I chose the New King James Version. Um, and it read, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Because a closed mouth cannot praise. Right. A closed mouth cannot worship. A closed mouth cannot be fed. And many times when we're going through such hardships, you don't know who to talk to. You know that you can always talk to God, but sometimes you need somebody who can talk right, and relate right, back right, to you. Right. But Amen. you're going through, yeah. and it's just so sad that in many aspects and many things that are happening in the church realm, um, you can't trust some Christians. You should be able to, but right. they don't understand um, the word right. confidentiality, right. to be a confidant. Right. If I confide in you, that means that I'm telling you this in privacy right, and right. if I didn't give you release to share it then you should not right. so because you were trying to go down that road of don't let life shut your mouth what do you have to say in that regards because it is definitely something that is um, a problem um, I feel like as you said um, Dr. Maynard sometimes you go the women are going through abuse in the church um, they have maybe tried to talk to their pastors or whatever because of the word that's coming forth and saying um about abuse and about your marriage. Maybe you're going through something that uh, you can't share because it's so heavy and you don't know who to talk to. You kind of shut your mouth about it and like, well, just let me deal with it. Or um, I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to go. So you feel like you're trapped or you're stuck. Right, 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 right. Uh, Apostle, I know that because you are a one who also counsels many, um, and, and I've seen that you, you love everyone and you're, you, you pull in and you also almost become a part of what they're going through. Mm -hmm. What do you find to be many issues that well, have shut people's mouths? One of the things is we first have to understand what comes out of our mouth. Um, we can speak 
things over ourselves. So we, we got to be careful what we have coming out of our mouth. Next, we need to be careful about what goes in our ear. And um, I think a lot of times we find ourselves following more so what someone else is saying than what God is saying about yeah. us. Wow, yes. And so um, I, I think that one of the important things that I learned is sharing yourself with people. Um, there has to be a balance. Right. There has to be a balance because when you share yourself with people, you give your all. You want to be just like Jesus, you know. You want to love right. You want to, But then in that, you get hurt. That's what makes you shut your mouth. Uh, when you shut your mouth, bitterness starts to well, yes, kind of yes, well up yes, on the inside yes. of you. And, and and say if you're going to the same place that they're going to, mm -hmm. every time you get to church, you're agitated and you're right. frustrated because you're in the company of these people. And when hurt, you know, we can't stop the hurt. We have to learn how to deal with the hurt. Right. Um, and I think that a lot of times being quiet is what we think we should do, but that carries us into depression sometimes. Right. So we got to be very careful about what we're doing as Christians. I think releasing it is probably more important than anything else. And sometimes when you're talking to another human being, like you said, you have to make sure that person understands the word confidentiality. Yeah. And also, I find that when I pour out at the altar, when I just, and I, I don't care about titles or nothing. Of that right, or what right, I look yeah. like while I'm doing it Amen. Uh, yeah. because I got to get that off, off of me, of me. Yeah. and so I, I pour out you know and just give God all of it and that's why I always leave room for you know maybe praise and worship might go for 40 minutes or 45 minutes because or maybe longer yes, because yes. people need to release yes, yes and once yes. you release then you're able to take in a word you're able to hear now, now when you're full of bitterness and pain you can't yes. hear and so you're not getting help you're just sitting there you kind of right. there but you're not right. there and what i want to piggyback right there when you said you give time for praise and worship because that is what ushers in the right. praise of the lord when we have the these rigid programs that set in some of some churches, you know, you got we're trying to be chop 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 chop. We're trying to get in and we're trying to get out because we've adapted the the world standard or the quote unquote those who come in. I ain't got time to be up in this church. The Lord don't take three hours to do nothing all day. You know, I'm just saying that's but, but that is time out for that. Let God have His, his way. way. If you want to see the presence of the Lord be made manifest in the earth realm, then we got to change some things. What do you think about that, Chantel? Because I told you. Coming down your lane, hallelujah. Well, I can relate to, you know, fighting through the shutdown. Right, right. When you feel overwhelmed and, you know, you feel like there's so much coming your way. And, you know, you have to come to a place where you make the decision that, what do I want to keep going in this circle or do I really want to come out? And when you make the decision that you really want to come out, you'll do something different. And yes. for me, I had to go into a place of fasting and praying and yes. getting in closer to God and allowing him, he already know, but speaking what was in my heart and what was in my mind and where I was and where I wanted to go and, right. and how I wanted to come out so that he could make the adjustments in me Yes, to help me be able to come out and not be stuck in that place because of everything that was going on in me and around me. Amen. Yes, yes. Um, I, I look at it, Apostle, again, um, just hearing what she said. You, know, you got to get into a place where you let go mm -hmm. and let God. Mm -hmm. But the Bible does say, and you mentioned earlier, that you have the power to speak a thing. So we have the power of life and death. It's in our tongue. Mm -hmm. It's in our mouths. Mm -hmm. uh, but if your mouth is shut, you can't speak. Right. Um, because you're so busy focused on everything else that's going on around you as opposed to being able to have the power and authority. That's only if you are in Christ Jesus. Let me make mention of that. So those of you who are watching, in order to have that power, you have to be in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But when you have that power, you can speak deliverance in your own situation, in your own set of circumstances. But I do know that life causes us many times to shut our mouth. And uh, you were making mention about women who are in abusive relationships and maybe experiencing that kind of domestic violence. Uh, and we had a program recently on domestic violence, um, women who are going through um, a variety of things uh, behind the scenes because you never know what is going on right. behind closed right. doors. Um, oh, we come to church yeah. dressed up, yeah, sure. really yeah. looking yeah. nice and everything, and on the inside tore up. Tore up. 
because we we're dealing with things that's in our home, things that we don't want other people to know about. Yes, so we look good, but for real, uh, on the inside, we have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So you, as you were saying, you, what is your response to that? Like, go into depth, like um, anything that you can think of, not necessarily your own personal life, but just in general, that that would be in a situation like that that's in the household, because it doesn't always have to be a husband and wife. Yeah. It can be children, Yeah. because children will rise up against you, right. and I've heard many parents, I don't know what, why, I, no, I ain't going to say that, I'm going to keep it in the eye, <laughs> this parent will bust your head down to the white meat, you understand? No, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but on the real... <laughs> That is the real. Woo! There's some children that are very, very defiant and and actually run the parent in the household. Okay, so uh, what would you? What would be some things that you would say that some people that you can acknowledge that people may be going through at this hour behind closed doors? Um, well, when it comes to children, sometimes they ha they're modeling what they see, what they have seen, and some of it's uh, verbal abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse. Um, they may see a parent, or, uh, they may be in a home where it's girlfriend and, you know, boyfriend, and um, they're just dealing with a lot of it. They don't have time. The parents don't have time to really raise their kids because they're doing their thing. Right. And so the child gets neglected. Yeah. Um, they want to be loved, so they're not loved, so they go out and, and get into gangs. And um, they really resent their parents for not being parents. Mm -hmm. And so they come wow. against, it's like they come against their own household their own parents because they, they really cry out and saying why have you neglected me why won't you spend time with me what is so important that you right. can't just give me five minutes of your time wow 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 so um i find it also there are many parents who who don't understand that your household is your first ministry mm -hmm. and so they stay in church 24 hours seven mm -hmm. days a week 365 days out of the year that means that they ain't never hiding from what yes Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I, but but some of them really don't understand because their pastors aren't really training and or teaching mm -hmm. the importance of your okay. you shouldn't have a dish a, a sink full of dishes in your house is towed up all from from one room to the other and you haven't man th that that might be the reason why the man busts you upside the head. I'm uh, um, you should, nobody yeah. should never hit anybody. Um, I'm just kidding around. You know, you guys know I always have a great time on the program. Um, but seriously, many people are going through a lot of things because of not having knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because it says my people perish for the lack, right? Right. Of knowledge. And so I believe that if you are a pastor, which you do, so I'm not, you know, you do I all the time. I do not. Um, this is one thing that I really, I, I do not like to overburden people with unnecessary programs. And if you're going to give, give, so we don't have to put on extra programs for this, that, and the other. Because you do need to have a, a place in your life where you're able to live out what we just taught you. Right. Uh, if you're there 24 hours a day, all day long, every day, because I know when I grew up, I was there uh, Sunday three times on Sundays, um, Tuesday night Bible study, Thursday Friday. rehearsal, Friday night service. And it's like, where do you learn how to, to live out what you just learned? Yeah, yes, so overburdening people with, uh, and, 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 and for the pastor, it's probably convenient to have that person available 24 hours. But if you have uh, a woman with children, a home, they, they really need to make that their first ministry. You know, and it may not even be church. It just may be, like she said, people doing their thing. Right. You know, right, very right. selfish now. Nobody is teaching them that yes. the, the children is coming first. So that child's growing up angry. Mm -hmm. they're, they're growing up with a lot of uh, different things that's bothering them. And I'll tell you what, where my mind went when you were talking. Because when Jesus came off of the mountain of transfiguration, you remember when the disciples was trying to uh, cast out the demon in the young boy. Yes, yes. And, um, and, the, and the scripture says, that uh, uh, that Jesus asked, what, what are they all around, gathered around the disciples for? And they said, because they were trying to get them to cast out this demon in the young boy. And mm -hmm. Jesus spoke to the demon. Right. The demon recognized who Jesus was. But it says that his father said, he's throwing my son into the fire and into the water. And I, and I really visually had to look at that, how when people speak different things to us or verbally abuse us, it throws us into a place. Yes. You know, or say something that hurts or something, it throws you into a place. And, and sometimes that place that it throws you into, you can't get right back out of. Right. And it's one thing I learned about words. You can duck a, a swing or, a, a, you know, a hit 
somebody trying to hit you, you can right. duck that, but you can't duck words. You can't duck words. You yeah. cannot duck yeah. words. Yeah. And when, once they're out, you can't grab them and bring them back. So the young man was thrown into different places by these spirits. Like us, we're thrown into different things mm -hmm. by what's coming in our ear or what's coming at us, circumstances or whatever. And so it will make us shut our mouth. And that's what was wrong with him. He was mute. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. And, um, oh, that's good. and then the Ooh, Bible that's says, good. That's good. the Bible says that... Um, uh, he would foam mm. at the mouth, and I and I looked that up. He would foam at the mouth. Foam is really water that that is like st stagnant to bubbles. Right. It can't flow when we're supposed to be a river of living water. Yes. So our mouth is shedding all we can get is foam out of it now. Ooh. But once the Lord spoke to him, he was able to open his mouth he and he was able, able to speak mouth. freely that, that his mouth wasn't shut. His his voice wasn't gone anymore. So I'm thinking of us as the church. We got to learn how to hear what the Lord is saying. And even if we speak it over ourselves, we got to remember that if he shut our mouth, he's taking our joy. Yes. If he take our joy, we don't have no strength. Yeah. The strength of the, uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. And so this is how we fight against him. But if I shut your mouth, you don't have nothing to fight with. Amen. Amen. Well, now, now since you, look, she didn't gave a look. She, that was I good. That yes. Look, y'all don't see, look, I got women napkins at. Ooh, hallelujah, because that was delicious. <laughs> 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 Oh, glory. <laughs> but I promise you that there is a word in her belly. She's going to come from that same, because she's a teacher. We you got we got to also talk about So We Will. She has a Bible school. Uh, so it is getting ready to come around again. We're going to give you all of that information. But this is the time, and I shared with you last week and coming into the new year, that we're going to introduce various segments. And this segment is called A Walk in the Word, where the woman of God today, Apostle Loretta Pernice, is going to walk in in the word uh, and just solidly show us from her perspective from the word of God what it really really means because she already went there she already started tapping in <laughs> what it means Ooh, to not yeah. allow life shut your mouth I give it I give you the floor well let me get my glasses it was my a couple bubbles. of things I wanted to put <laughs> um, I just wanted to speak on and, and I gotta turn this clock probably because sometime <laughs> Uh, I was just looking in the word last night and, and uh, looking at some of the things that uh, cause us to shut our mouth. And uh, one of the things that I think is necessary that we learn how to deal with rejection, because as Christians, it's mandatory that we're going to we're going to have rejection. It's going to happen to us if we're going to walk in this thing. And rejection provides an opportunity for us to grow in grace and die a little more to ambition and pride and other motives, which is so quickly colored by our revelation. Like we think that once God gives us the opportunity to go forth and deliver the word of God, that that's all to it. And it's right. so much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. It's so many things that we have to face. And, and Jesus went to the cross and we don't understand our cross. Our cross is dealing with rejection, is dealing with people saying things against us, people that don't agree with what God is saying for our lives or over our lives. But who will you receive? Will you receive what God said about you or what other people are saying about you? Which is difficult when you deal with rejection. A lot of people won't even go get a job at uh, uh, a place where they they call and make those 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 calls. Uh, Calling centers. Right, call centers because they can't take rejection. Rejection is something that's going to happen to us if we're going to walk out ministry. Also, um, I highlighted that uh, if we embrace rejection as a discipline of the Lord, we will grow in grace and in love because you start understanding, well, rejection could be direction. Maybe I'm trying to go in a way yes. that I shouldn't be moving in. And so if that's rejecting me, then I know he got another door open for me. Right. And so these are the things that we take in perspective while the enemy is trying to shed our mouth. One of the other things I was looking at was in Samuel, um, Saul had this thing about himself that he felt like if, if things didn't go the way he wanted them to go, that he would, uh, you know, take off and do things himself without in inquiring of the Lord. Um, and one, that's one of the things that um, I found with leadership. Uh, we will go ahead of God. Right without inquiring uh, 
because we have spiritual authority. And then with this authority comes a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And humility is one of those responsibilities. Yes. So uh, we know about Samuel's disobedience when God told him to kill the Philistines and he did not utterly kill everything. Mm -hmm. He had to save some things for himself. That attitude is still living in the church today. Yes. Um, we still have people that just will not, they'll do it their way. I don't care what. You have to repeatedly go over and over things. They just decide, I'm going to do it my way. This is not our game. This is not our kingdom. It's his kingdom, and we play by his rules. Mm -hmm. And those one of the, that's one of the things that I, I, I looked at. Another thing that was important to me, um, and we still, it's still in Samuel, is when one in the spiritual authority rebels against the Holy Spirit. There's a void there. There's a void there. And when that void is there, we tend to fill it with counterfeit mm. spiritual authority. It's counterfeit. And this will begin as simple as reliance upon hype, mm -hmm. soulish power, um, control, mm -hmm. manipulation. And we know that's right on the same lines with witchcraft. Yes. And we don't understand what we're, we're doing. We're conjuring up something, mm. trying to get it to go, and we gotta be very Ooh. careful about how we're doing it. It's so, such a slippery slope. Yes. Yes. So as we're moving into things of God, we just gotta look at how we're doing it and what we're doing and make sure that that, that soft spirit is not activated on, on the inside of right. us. Right. Then one of the last things I want to say is that true spiritual authority, and the reason why I'm speaking about spiritual authority is because when we, when we speak these things out of our mouth over ourselves, yes. you got to understand that, that this is going to be a treacherous journey. We look at Jesus and we keep forgetting what he had to really go through. Yes. He continually ran from the Pharisees and the scribes and the, you know, the people that had it out for him. And some of them he would convert even with the words and the power that he had. But some of the majority of them took him all the way to his death. Mm -hmm. And this was the high priest. I know we don't like to talk about that. But this was the high priest. That was in conjunction with what was going on. Anytime something takes super control over you to the point where you feel like if, if, it, if, if they're doing it better, then you feel some kind of way because you're not in control of it. You need to check yourself at that point and make sure that you are not being manipulated by something other than the Holy Spirit. Because if God, you should want to see your daughters and your sons go higher than you. You should want to see them uh, get to higher levels than you did do more than you've done the bible says jesus said greater works you're going to do he yes. wanted his children to do greater works and we should want those that we've raised up in the gospel yes. to do greater works not to keep them under our feet right so we have to be very careful of it but true spiritual authority is not to not an honor to be sought it is a burden to be carried oh that's good Definitely. It is a burden to be carried because you got to understand that this thing is going to take you through uh, some changes. But every time you come out on the other side, it's victory. Yes, that's a reason to dance, not just hop around just because the music sounds good. Right. But I overcame something. I went through something and I overcame it and I came out with victory. I came out still loving. I came out still uh, fellowship and I yes. came out still wanting to be in relationship with other people because right. many times. Times you come through but you find yourself in solitary you find yourself not yes, wanting to be yes, around people yes, and not want yes, to fellowship yes. with people but when you come through with victory you have to have a victory dance that that deserves a, a Holy Ghost party right there right there. and so we, we, we find out that um, when you seek after this these positions and these places uh, for authority and influence um, you don't know what you're really asking for because mm, immaturity yes. can be our doom <clears throat> if authority is given to us before our time. Absolutely. It can tear you down. You won't have any understanding about what's going on because don't do what you see somebody else do. Do what God is telling you <clears throat> to do. Don't move out before your time. A lot of people want a, a lot of things they see other people have, but you don't know what it took. To for them to get My there. God. So we got a lot of saints in the house of God that got their mouth shut 
because they've been trying to operate like they've seen somebody else operate. But the scripture tells us that we haven't even seen, we don't even understand, it's not even in the heart of man what God has in store for us. So he don't need to duplicate us. Right, right. He needs somebody that's original, someone that's willing to step out by faith and do what they've seen nobody else ever do. Come on, that's good. That's what he want to see done. My time. Huh? <laughs> I, I stayed on top of it this time. Good time. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't let life shut, shut your, your mouth. mouth. That is our topic. Again, don't let life shut your mouth because you have the capacity if you open up your mouth to allow God to fill it. He'll give you the words to say. He'll give you the ability to call a thing that is not as though it is. Right. He will also give you the power and the authority to see those things be made manifest. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so that right there just I mean I'm so excited for if we was in the church we'll not run around <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> glory be to God I thank you again for being on Evangel. what do you have to say because that was a whole lot and that yeah, was, was. Good. <laughs> hallelujah. awesome God is awesome yes he is um, I wanted to uh, actually talk about my poem um, as it relates to shutting, keeping our mouth closed what has kept our mouth closed Amen. I don't formally have a title but um I believe God gave it to me. Um, the enemy is cunning. He's been planning your demise from birth. Telling you what you ain't worth. Been whispering in your ear. Now you're scared and full of fear. Oh yeah. For so long you believe that your life didn't matter. Voices, voices, voices caused you to cease to chatter who told you that your life doesn't matter was it mama or daddy's voice or perhaps a traumatic event or circumstances in your life that has silenced you and told you you cannot speak the enemy has been playing with your head he has said you are weak although you are all grown up and you know the right things to say but on the inside, the enemy is having his way. My. All dressed up on the outside, <laughs> but your voice has been put on mute. Living like this, it just ain't cute. Living in old cycles and seasons, not fully understanding the reason. Don't you know as a man think if so is he? You can't be what others want you to be. Mm -hmm. Or worry, worry, worry. What will others think of me? I want you to know that your life does matter and you matter. God gave you a voice. You have the right to speak. Time to confess. I am strong. I am not weak. Okay. Secrets of a dark past can no longer loom once you address the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Anybody got elephants in the room? Get that zoo together. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody got some elephants in the room? Bring that. Come on, zoo tamer. What 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 what, what is he called? A zoo tamer, zoo what zookeeper, zookeeper. Become the zookeeper in the room. Amen. Get it together. Begin to speak to those things. Begin to say, I am a child of God, and I am what the word says I am. Hallelujah. Yes. Any of you at this moment in time that do not know Christ as your personal savior, Apostle Pernice, would you do? an invitation to ask them to come to the Lord. Amen. Yes. Um, I know that sometimes we hear so many uh, invitations and we see people come to the Lord, but what happens after you give yourself to him? And I think that um, today I want you to find a church. If you make that decision, I need you to find a church home where someone is able to walk you through salvation because salvation is free but deliverance is going to take a little a little while i want you to at this point in time speak to your heart and just say lord i need you to forgive me for all my sins sins that are known and sins that are unknown forgive me for my sins 
and receive me into yourself. Scripture says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, there's nothing that you can ask for. I will supply all of your needs. So we're asking you today to make that decision. Come to the knowledge that the way you've been doing things is not working. And even if life has shut your mouth, this is not it. This is not the end of it. This is only the beginning of something that God want to bring new to you. So I'm encouraging you today to speak to yourself. Don't let life shut you down because everybody is going to experience life. Everybody is going to experience life. My weakness may not be your weaknesses, but we have them. And my flaws may not be your flaws, but we have them. So I'm asking you, please make a decision about which way you want to go. Do you want to continue in the cycle? Or do you really want to escape that cycle and live? Jesus died for us to have life and have it more abundantly. So receive what we're asking you today. Receive Christ into your life. And we know that when you do it, you're going to let everybody else know that God has done something for you. Amen. Amen. We thank you so much again for always uh, tuning in to the Sharpening Zone for, for joining us. Um, <clears throat> the topic again is don't let life shut your mouth. And an open mouth uh, to me is a mouth that d it denotes hunger. An open mouth is one that is a mouth that is looking to, to be filled. Uh, he said he will fill it uh, if we would come to him and, and just depend on him to do so. Um, I was talking with my sister and sharing with her about the topic today. And what I what came to me is in the process of them hearing what he said, I am the Lord thy God that have brought you out of Egypt. Egypt was a place of bondage. Right. Okay. And he crossed them over into freedom. However, the problem that still exists is they were free, but they were still bound. Right. Mm. They didn't know how to be free. Right. Mm. That was what was really significant to me, the fact that they were free. Christ gave you the ability to be free, free indeed. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So you are free, but you allow life circumstances. Nobody ever said that the road was going to be easy. Right. Nobody ever said that life was going to continually be a picnic. And you allow life to shut you down and be muffled or silenced because we do not know how to walk freely in what God has given us. Do you have anything to respond to on that, babe? I just in what you were saying is in our weakness, our strength, God's strength is made perfect. Yes. And when we are in those weak places, then it is for us to depend on God. We all flesh, so when things come and they take us. You know what? We all going to go there. Mm -hmm. But how long we stay oh, yeah. is up to us. Yes. Oh, that's and us. when the word that has been taught us and that we have studied, when we get in those places and we allow the word to do the work, we receive it and we begin to walk in it, then we can come out. And we don't have to stay in that place, like you said, of bondage. Mm -hmm. We realize that. I am free, and I am more than a conqueror, and I am I can do all things. Yes, These yes. that's they become more than cliches at that right, point. They right. become real and active in yes. us, and that's what will pull us out and allow us to be able to get to the point where we can open our mouths. Yes, that's awesome, good. That was good. That's good. That's good. Anything to say or piggyback off of that evangelist work? I just want to give everyone an opportunity to really go forth and their thoughts. Um, I wanted to speak to those who may be having experiencing fear sometimes fear they know we know the word and all of that but sometimes fear holds us back you know mm -hmm. things we've gone through in the past and i wanted to let somebody know all fear is is false evidence appearing real it appears real but it's not that's and you don't have to stay in that place yes that's that's good that's good and let's look at the yeah. schemes of the enemy though mm -hmm. that's part of why he works some things on us because mm -hmm. he want us to be in right. fear or he want mm -hmm. us to feel that rejection or that yes. pain or whatever mm -hmm. and he wants you to feel like God is not with you or not for you and so one of the and he, we can't really you know fight that because right. that's his job that's, his, that's job. his job our job though is to stay focused on the things or the word of God when he's what he's speaking to us so I love 
to help people walk through different things like that because to everything that they have an excuse not to come out there's mm -hmm. a word for it mm -hmm. there's a word mm -hmm. for it and um, I know the freedom in the word when you was talking about him bringing them out of Egypt he needed somebody that had already been right. in mm -hmm. Egypt mm -hmm. he needed somebody that was familiar with the surroundings and the operation and the system of Egypt to get them, to bring them to a place of freedom. Mm -hmm. He needed somebody that had already been on the other side of the mountain, mm -hmm. but didn't have nobody to talk to while they was over mm -hmm. there. Nobody but what was yeah. over there, the mountain. He yes. needed somebody that mm -hmm. didn't, Amen. wasn't worried about what direction I need to go in, what are we doing now, what position I have. No, wasn't nobody there right. but him and God. Mm -hmm. And that's where he had the opportunity to be built up in his most holy, most holy faith and go back Right, right. and get them out and once they got out that's the problem they got out of bondage but bondage wasn't out of them mm, yes and so here they are in a place in the wilderness in the wilderness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now we don't realize when we're in the wilderness of life we have the freedom to do things but how do i do it right and then god was so gracious to them that he allowed them to be there and actually have the same clothes and have the same, you know, everything they had for 40 years. And and when it was, when it was, really he was revealing them to themselves, to right. themselves. Right. He let them know, listen, I'm going to bring you out. What are you going to do when you get out? And what did they do? Rebelled against him. Yes, he did. Yes, That's what we do. When God bring us out of something, it's like instead of understanding what he bring us out of, we tamper with it or we see how far mm -hmm. we can push the envelope, <laughs> you know, before God does yes. something, before he lets us know I'm God. I'm not, you know, I'm not man. Right. That I should lie, you know, and the wrath of God has really been showing his hand in different places, California, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the fires, the mudslide, the different things that's happening. He's showing his hand. He's letting us know. I'm really, he said, I will not strive with man always. Yes, he's and he's right. letting us know I'm getting tired of what you're doing because it seems like everything else has a, p a proper place, right. all of it, except Christianity. Wow, that's good. Every door is being open for other things to happen. People are fighting for their rights in different areas. And the church is just sitting back, Very letting true. it happen. Um, and I love God. I do. I love God. But we got to remember that church is built on human beings. And so we're, we have flaws and faults. And we're not fighting for something that we say we believe in. We're celebrating Martin Luther King, but do we understand what he fought right, for? Right, right, right. And, and what he done for us to have the freedom that we have? We celebrate him just like we celebrate Jesus, but he died yes. for us to have yes. this freedom. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. And it literally shows us that where we are today, to shut our mouth is almost a sin. Mm. It you is. know what I mean? Yes. To shut our mouth, even to allow something to shut our mouth is almost a sin because it was too much done for us to have this freedom. It was too many things that happened for us to get to where we are right now. Right, right. And that would be from, for, from the church perspective as at large, the body of Christ. But many times um, when we hear, don't let life shut your mouth, it really is an individual thing um, that people are going through and again remember kind of going back and forth in terms of um, wanting someone to talk to but because of past tense issues or past tense experiences we've learned from past tense experiences <laughs> you can't talk to people yeah. first of all many times you can't handle my truth because if I really came down the lane because normally I don't go around the mulberry bush I come straight down the road bowling ball and all Okay, mm -hmm. and I come straight real people are like, and automatically, instead of saying, Wow, you know, and well, how can I sit? They begin to judge you, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, child, honey, let me tell you what had happened, girl. What had happened was, girl, and this is what people have experienced so many times that they have been trained by the church, by the church. To, to shut, shut their mouth. mouth. Yep, oh, wait. I want to get oh, up and God. testify. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. And they have taught us to be quiet. And so you have to learn how, especially in leadership, mm -hmm. you have to learn how to navigate this system with just you and the God of your salvation. 
See? I should be able to talk to my sister. I should be able Never to talk to my brother this. because the word of God says, am I my brother? You should be, we should be our brother or our sister's keeper. Yeah, yeah. And when I share something with you, you shouldn't go and spread it or spread the news. If anything, what you should do is fall on your face and begin to pray for me. Begin to intercede on my behalf because we all should be able to be watch gatekeepers. Right. And watch us who sit in the high tower and see things afar off and begin to pray. Ooh we, ooh we, ooh we. Is it? Can anybody identify, or is it just me to have experience? No, that no. Kind of thing? We can identify, and you know I can identify. Yeah. Oh, leadership. Woo. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot really be honest in certain arenas. Yes. You know they just don't allow you to be honest about where God brought you from, even though the prayers were for you to come from the from those places. Right, right. Just don't say where you come from. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, last Sunday I talked about navigating through the sifting the sifting mm -hmm. and when you said the navigation through right, right. that's what brought it back to my mind I kind of looked at uh, Mr. Harris I, I was talking about when we go through when, when um, Satan desired to sift right. Peter as wheat mm -hmm. and uh, Jesus was saying he desired to sift him as wheat and he said I pray that your faith fail not well I need navigation through the mm -hmm. sifting Right, right. because when I'm not able to talk to my brother or my sister about something without it being Repeat it. Matter of fact, that it's they have all kind of shows. Gossip. That's gossip. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you have. Uh, it, I won't name them. Right, right, I won't right, name right. the shows. Right, but gossip mm -hmm. and spilling tea is what's going on. That's what's happening. Right, right. So uh, people are really, you know, they're they're bringing it to the forefront now and, and making it seem like it's okay right, to gossip. Right. It's all mm -hmm. right for you to go behind your brother or your sister's back and say things about right. them. So when when we when we go navigate through this si the sifting, which means things are going to happen, but I'm praying that your faith don't fail. Right, right. So in the midst of it, somebody has to learn how to hold what they're what they're listening to. Right. They have to learn how to uh, give without saying to their brother. It's it's people that I will go to my grave some things that they have talked to me about because I can't talk to other people about them. You know what I mean? Right. I can't say it. It's 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 just. I won't say not right, but it's 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 uh it's personal with them, and I feel like this: if I'm going to help you, then I need to learn how to be confidential. And you know, you have to learn that if you're running a business. Yes, yes. And that's one of the things that really helped me with confidentiality. That part right there, mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it you literally can get sued for talking other people's business. Right, right. So um, you know, but but I don't know what it's not just in the church; it's, it's everywhere. everywhere. It's everywhere. People that they say they're friends, you can't depend on them to talk to them about things that right. you're going through. And sometimes when you do talk to them, they could care less. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's all I can say. Cause that is so true. Like, mm -hmm. They somewhere else. They don't even. As a matter of fact, you on the phone and look, they didn't put you on speakerphone. They didn't walk away. Oh, they they ain't doing stuff. And they come back like, mm -hmm. and they going, they doing what they doing. They ain't been more thought. Look, they ain't been more thinking about what you said than the man in the moon. And we have to change that. We have to do better because we are called to a different right. reckoning. We are called to a different set of rules. We can't play by the world's rules. We have to play by Christ's right. rules. It's and in order up. for the church to stand up, to reclaim and take authority over everything, because he gave us dominion and power over everything, right. there is nothing that we don't have authority over in him. Okay? And we have to take everything back under control and begin to allow people to see that the God of our salvation is yet in control. He's yet in control. I don't know if that's me. I don't know. Anywho, um, what I'm trying to say is in order for us to get back to the basics, the change we want to see have to first begin in us. Yes. Each one of us yes. individually and then unified as the whole body of Christ. Um, because of time kind of beginning to wind down on us, I do not want uh, anything to bypass and not allow us to know where Elam Christian Center is, both in Warren, Ohio. I think it's 3915 Ridge Road. I'm <coughs> a little off, uh, but I'll give it to you so that you can tell us where it's where both churches are. It's one church with two locations. Um, where are they located? 
3214 Ridge Road in Warren, Ohio, and 2305 Carpenter Road in Astrobula, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Services start at 945 on Sundays in Warren and at 2 p.m. in Astrobula. Okay, can you repeat that from the top one more time so this way they'll be able to... Warren Elam Christian Center is at 3214 Ridge Road, Warren, Ohio, and Astrobula Elam is at 2305 Carpenter Road in Astrobula, Ohio. I also want to remind you um, that the first Saturday in February, we will begin our School of Wisdom. We call it so. Um, and this, uh, this quarter, we're going to be working on um, Disciple Shift. Disciple Shift. Uh, we're trying to work with people to teach them how to be followers so they can be great leaders. Um, and so we're, we're working on a couple areas. Uh, we have four quarters, six-week quarters in the year. It's $200 a year. Um, that includes your books and all of that, those good things, wonderful things. We always have snacks there because it's from 10 to 1230. So two and a half hours of class, six weeks every Saturday. So we start the first Saturday in February. Hope to see you there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm, I want the world to know, hallelujah, that this beautiful woman of God has given me an opportunity. I used to teach there right. um, with the leaders. And again, like I said, I want them to know that you are not just someone who came on the show today, but you are someone that I love dearly. Um, I call you mom. Yeah. Um, you call me daughter. Um, and we have known each other for n pushing a decade. I, I know it's been since nine, no, 2010, I think, 2010, 2011, the latest. Okay. But nevertheless, um, I'm grateful for you. I appreciate you. Um, you will not, by any means, uh, be out of finances if you put in 200. Sometimes you have to learn. The body of Christ needs to learn how to sow into yourself for yourself. So she's talking about sow. Sow into you. When you go forth and you begin to read and invest time to build yourself up, you are getting something or you're gaining something um, that can never be taken away from you. Yeah. Um, it shifts you into another mindset. It shifts you into another uh, place in God um, to become educated is the best thing anybody can do because knowledge is power knowledge is power um, also what did we miss did we miss anything we did talk about pathway house you already informed them about so um what events do you because I know that you normally have um, burning, um, with truth. burning with truth um, I'm certain that that will be coming together coming that's forth our this yearly year. yeah that's our yearly uh, conference uh, it's in August and hopefully I'll be back before August to let you know the exact dates and yes, who will be yes, there yes. Um, I have had some of the most awesome speakers that come from all over the United States and um, we always look forward to burning with truth because there's so much in uh, whatever may be happening in one part of the country and maybe not happening in another part of the country, we come together and we grab word from right. them and we get, you know, it, it is investing in yourself. Burning with Truth is investing to me. That's my time to sh shut down and receive what someone else has to say. Um, and it's a good thing for all leaders to do. Every now and then you need somebody to speak into your life. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Evangelist Wilcox, is there anything that you have happening or some things that you are, are desiring to work on this 2018 that we should be aware of? No, not at this time. No, no. We decree and declare that it's getting ready to change. Um, that that poetic book just by yourself is going to be made manifest this 2018. Amen. Yeah, amen. Um, amen. Books being completed because you got about two or three or four or five of them sitting um, but they need to be made manifest yeah. so that people can have that tangible thing and you can train them even at their own leisure time as they sit in the comforts of their home. Yes. Amen. Yes. Um, anything for you 2018 Chantel? Hallelujah, Minister Harry. going to be here to support Elam Christian Center and Amen. Apostle Pernice. Amen. See, I love her to pieces. That she is dedicated, <laughs> dedicated. Yeah. And anytime you uh, go there and you are in the building, she well, I will say at least for me, because you know I'm special. Hallelujah, <laughs> they love me. 
she just greets me and she gives me this big bear hug. It's just such a, such a wonderful thing to know that you are loved yes. and that you are amongst people who genuinely love you and care about you in spite of whatever you all may go through because love doesn't always agree. Love is love. Mm -hmm. And when I say love doesn't agree, it doesn't mean that love shifts or love does something different. I'm talking about in terms of we don't always agree. Sisters and brothers don't always agree. But love has the capacity to overcome and change anything. Love right. covers a multitude yeah, yeah. of sins. When we say sins, doesn't mean it because you did something wrong. But the fact is it covers it and makes what was wrong right, right again. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, I had an opportunity to be with... Um, my sister in Christ, uh, based in Houston, Texas, Minister Misty Early, um, she has a program there, uh, the Situation Station. I had an opportunity to be on early that morning. Um, I didn't get a chance to really post that information and really share it like I wanted to. But for the playback, it's a teleconference. You guys can go to uh, or you guys can dial into 515 604 one four one seven again that's five one five six zero four one four one seven and the uh recording playback reference number is pound one eight four pound one eight four and the subject was hit the dab Woo, what I say? <laughs> and that was <laughs> oh I don't want to give you all the juicy details you got to go and listen to it amen and support uh, Minister Early's program Central Standard Time she comes on at 6 o'clock a.m. Monday through Friday so for us Ohioans that would be uh, 7 o'clock and the, just the general number 515-603-3117 515-603-3117 and the access code is 367-651 367-651 she always has dynamic speakers on and so I, I know that this is just a shift but I have to acknowledge those who acknowledge me amen and just say that the same way you supporting me girl mwah, 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 I'm supporting you amen <laughs> hallelujah so we're winding up anything any other words any other thoughts that you have to say today because you've been pretty quiet on me hallelujah look normally I should be like we just we just just we just we just talking she got so much word in her we'd be like oh yeah mm -hmm. and she's she like Dr. Mena and today she like Ooh, mm. she, that's because nerves I'm telling you on this side of the room ner if you ain't been doing it for a long because I'm still trying to work on it oh hallelujah and it got a little <laughs> bit more calmer but when I come and sit down at this chair the butterflies and stuff, but that's because you got to depend on God. Yeah. The moment them butterflies leave, that mean that you thinking that you didn't arrive, boo. <laughs> Somebody need to tell you something a little different. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you guys got, Pastor? Before we go, we got two minutes or so. Any last, any last thoughts that you want to share? Just, re just remember some of the things that we said to you, um, and and know that you don't have to be with or in a church to ask God to forgive you for yeah. your sins and to make things right with God. But I do encourage you to find a church and find a Bible-based church that will teach you how to live a righteous life. And don't let life shut your mouth. Don't let life shut your mouth. I'm, how we doing? How we doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let life shut your mouth. Uh, don't be bound when God has given you the ability to be free. Speak to those things as though those things that are not as though they are. Meaning you have the capacity to say, I am blessed. My house is blessed. My children are blessed. My finances have changed. I can decree that thing and it shall be established in the earth realm. Is that what the word of God says? That's what it says. So I can change my situation simply by opening my, my mouth. mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can change my situation and my circumstances simply by opening my mouth. Don't let life shut your mouth. And to my viewers, mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you. Thank all of you that have tuned in today. Hope to see you again next week. Kingdom blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.